we thank you for the blood that Jesus shed for me. Way 
You were right there beside me, and you 
remember if it's 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy, but it's chapter 2, verse 8, where it says, when we come into the house of the Lord, let us raise holy hands to him. Would you just raise your hands? You can raise them as high as you want to, but I just want to speak a blessing into your life. I want you to know that when the Lord heard your voice today, when he saw your mind's attention go towards him and your heart's affection was towards him, I want you to know that angels were released into your life, that there are paved ways before you. I want you to know that if you have children, they're getting stronger in the faith right now. They're getting stronger and stronger. I want you to know that when they go to school, there's an angel before them, there's an angel behind them taking care of them. If you have adult children, wherever they are right now, the Lord is watching them. His hand is upon them. He's taking care of them. If you have financial needs, I'm telling you, I've seen miracles financially. Put your hands together if you've seen miracles happen financially. Miracles happen. God has a way of sending financial blessings to you from places that you never dreamed they would come from. I want you to know that God's sending you finances. He's sending health into your body. If you're sick today, I just want you to lift your eyes. Tell the Lord, I, this is what I need. Tell him exactly what you need. Go ahead. He's healing your body right now. He's healing your heart right now. He's healing your spirit right now. Sometimes we come to the house of the Lord, we just need, a, we need him to heal us. Sometimes we've been hurt so deeply, we don't even tell people how deep it's been. Sometimes it's our faith that's been crushed. Somebody's words has crushed us and it's just hard to move on. There's a, a, a short song, an easy song to learn that I grew up with. That when I, I need the Lord just to heal parts of me, I'll, I'll sing this song and, and I want someone to sing it real quick. And you know, you may know the words and you can sing it, but, but even if you don't, I just, I want you to keep your chin lifted and and look to your father. It's easier for me when I close my eyes, but whatever you want to do, let's just worship him for a minute. There is healing in this house, healing in this house, manifested peace to come. Trust There is healing in this house, there's restoration in this place, there is mercy, there is grace, though you have laden come, bring your burdens one by one, leave them here where they belong, there is healing in this house there is healing in this house healing in this house manifest and peace to calm troubled hearts with healing balm there is healing in this house restoration Sometimes when I pray, I just close my eyes and I don't even say a word. I don't even say a word. I just put my hands like this and I just close my eyes and just say, Lord, I want you to touch me. I'm not going to say a word. You don't say a word. 
Let's just stand in his presence just for a moment. He knows your special needs and the Holy Spirit wants to do something in your life this morning. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. You're the reason why we're here. We love you and we honor you. The Bible says that in a twinkling of an eye, just in a, in a blink, and when I grew up, this was so real to me. I, was, I knew that my next blink, my next blink could be it. So I wanted my heart to always be ready. The Bible says in a twinkling of an eye, we will see him, that the skies will be ripped open. We will see him. When that day happens, we will erupt into a standing ovation. We won't even be able to contain it. I want you just for a moment to imagine that that moment is right now. And let's erupt into the best, greatest round of applause. Come on. Come on, let's give it to him. Let's give it to him. Let's give it to him. We love you. Come on, let's give it to him. Let's tell the worship team we appreciate them. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Turn around and look at somebody and say, I'm glad you're here today. All right. Man, it's good to see you guys. How many of you are enjoying this weather? Wave at me, clap, nod your head, something. You're just, just glad that this weather is so nice. Um, you, know, you know there's this fine line between being happy for someone and being bitter. There's like this fine line. I, I went to California a few um, months ago. I was gonna um, officiate a wedding and the weather was just so beautiful. It's like this, you know, 365 days a year. And I looked at someone and said, I I'm so happy that I'm jealous about your, your, your weather here. And so I said, I'm thrilled that you've had to pay a million dollars for your house that's only worth 100,000 in Texas. <laughs> Uh, that didn't come from a good place, but uh, <laughs> have you ever wondered sometimes that you're only half saved? <laughs> All right. Uh, if you're a guest in this room, on the way out the door, on the right-hand side, there's a green table. We want to give you a Visa card for $15 just to say, hey, thank you for coming. We want to buy you lunch today. And um, if you're visiting, I want to challenge you. Give us one year of your life. Give us one year. I promise you, you'll never be the same. What's today's date? September what? 29th. 29th? Man, this year is going by quick. But just mark this day on your calendar, September the 29th. And next year at this time, you can just smile and say, I gave the church one year of my life. And you will know that it has been the best year of your life. I promise you that. I want to give this Visa card to uh, my son brought a friend this morning. His name is Trent. I'm going to give this $15 Visa card to you. Give him a big round of applause. 
We're going to transition into a time of tithes and offerings this morning. If you're visiting, I know what you're doing. You're interviewing us. You're trying to figure out if you like us, trying to figure out if you're going to come back. Um, so uh, just continue to interview us. You don't have to participate in this part of the service. My challenge, though, is go ahead and grab your cell phone, go to your app store, type in Celebration Church TW, download the Celebration app. You'll learn a lot about us. Every ministry is in that app. Whenever we do uh, baby dedications, you'll see it in the app. Baptisms, it's in the app. My notes for today's message is in the app. And so go ahead and download that. But for those of you that call Celebration Church your church home, these are the moments where you say, you know what, I am going uh, to honor the Lord in my tithes and offerings. And I just want you guys to know that Celebration Church also tithes. 10% of whatever comes in every month goes to other ministries. And so this is something that I know is a biblical principle. So let me encourage you with this verse. It reads like this, Psalms 37, verse 17. It says, the strength of the wicked will be shattered. This is a harsh statement. But anyone who doesn't honor the Lord with their life, the Bible says clearly, wherever you're putting your strength and your confidence, it's going to be shattered. And then it goes on to say, but the Lord takes care of the godly. Who are the godly? The perfect people? Absolutely not. The godly people are people who worship God. And the Lord says, I will be your strength. When everyone else in the world is losing their source of security, I just want you to know that I will be your strength. I got you. I hope that encourages you. Let me pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless your people. Lord, your word says in Ephesians 3.20 that you are able to give them exceedingly, abundantly, more than they can ask or imagine. Bless them in ways that they cannot even imagine. They can't ask you for those requests because they can't even imagine them to ask for them. Bless them, Lord. If you receive that, say real loud, amen. 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 All right, well, there's so many of you that have tuned in this morning, and this next round of applause is just for you. Come on, let's give them our best. This is for you. Thank you for tuning in today. My name's Frankie Mazapika. The title of today's message is Jesus Prayed for Peter. Jesus Prayed for Peter. Let me lay the foundation for the message using two scriptures today. The first one is in Luke chapter 22, verse 31. It reads like this. And Jesus said, Simon, Simon. He was talking to Peter. Peter went by two different names in scripture. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed, listen to this, Jesus prayed to his father. Uh, Many of you have seen football games where they hold up a poster and it says John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, Jesus has a father. And Jesus prayed to his father And he says, Lord, do not let Peter's faith fail. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed that your faith would not fail. There's the other scripture I want to share with you. Uh, It's in Romans chapter 8, verse 34 where it says that Jesus right now, if you ever want to know where Jesus is right now, he's at the right hand of the Father, and he is interceding for you. In in other words, he is praying for you. He prayed for Peter, and now he's praying for you, and he's praying for me. So I've got three major points. 
The first one is, why did Jesus pray that his faith would not fail? Then I want to talk about, did Peter's faith fail or not? And then thirdly, I want to talk about how Jesus is praying for you. Are you ready? Say yes. yes. Come on, let me hear you. Are you ready? Say yes. yes. Come on, put your hands together. I, I believe this word's going to encourage you. So when Jesus said, Peter, Satan is asking to sift you like wheat. I want you to imagine, many of you have seen National Geographic where like a lion is kind of crouched down and his tail looks like it's, it's made of like a coat hanger. It's still, right? He's crouched down, he's ready for attack. But a lot of times they kind of go through high grass. Their, their head is down and they're going through high grass. They're hunting. They're going through, if you will, the wheat, the high grass. And, and they're looking for an opportune path to make an attack. And the Bible is saying this, that like a lion, he's going through your life, looking, sifting through the wheat, looking for an opportunity to jump and begin to tear your life apart. There's two specific areas. The first one is he's trying to tempt you. He's trying to put something in front of you. I have a street gang in my neighborhood. They're all raccoons. Yeah. I live in the country. They can get into any trash can. I can put cords and chains around my trash can. Those raccoons will lift it and squeeze into it and turn into pancakes and get in there and come out. I'm telling you, they're scary. I can lay a trap every single night and put Reese's Pieces because I think to myself, if I was a raccoon, that's what I would want. Put Reese's Pieces down, just lay it out. Every morning I can catch a raccoon. I got so tired of catching raccoons, I was like, just have the trash. <laughs> you know, they will, <laughs> never mind, I'm done with the raccoons. But the, the, the way I would trap them is I just tempt them. I know they like that and I tempt them. Whenever Satan is coming into your life, the first thing he's doing is you have unique temptations. You have unique temptations and he will place that temptation right in front of you. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. He's coming in. He knows what will tempt you. Simon, Simon, he's looking to tempt you like wheat, sift you like wheat. There's something in you. I have a friend of mine named John. He told me this last night. There's something in you, in your flesh, that looks for something to worry about. It's just looking all the time. It's, it's constantly looking so when Satan comes into your life, yes, he's sifting you to tempt you, but he's also saying, worry about this. And once that gets taken care of, it's like, here we go. Let's worry about this. What? Let's worry about that. Let's worry about this. Let's worry about that. He's constantly coming in. And Jesus does not pray that Satan will stop sifting him. He doesn't pray for that. He doesn't say, Father, keep the devil away. He doesn't do that. He doesn't say, Father... Keep the worries away. Keep the temptation away. He does not pray for that. He says this, Lord, I know Satan's coming and I'm praying that his faith does not fail. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you cannot see. It's in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Certain. In other words, how many of you are certain there's oxygen around you? You walk outside and you feel something. You go, I'm certain that's the wind. I can't see it. I can't see oxygen. can't see the wind. I can't see sound waves. But I'm certain it's there. What the enemy wants to do is he wants to come and cause you to be uncertain that God is there. And one more step for, further. If he can't convince you that God is not there, if he can't convince you, you are convinced he's there then he will convince you that he will not get involved. He'll convince you of that. And Jesus is saying, I am praying, 
Peter, that your faith will not fail. I, I had a friend of mine in high school. He was a few years older than me. His name was Jeff. I wanted to be Jeff. I was open to changing my name to Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, I wanted to be him so bad. Jeff was pigeon-toed. His toes actually pointed in. And he'd walk like this. I'm not pigeon-toed. I promise I'm walking like this. Uh, my toes are, don't point in. Uh, and I'm walking like Jeff. He wore MC Hammer pants. Some of you have no idea what that means. But bottom line, they're made out of like polyester or silk or whatever. And, and it, the, the crotch hangs down to your knees. You can take a basketball and kick it. And if they go like this, to go between, it'll get caught in the pants. Amen. Nod your head at me if you know what I'm talking about. It, he wore MC Hammer pants. I wear MC Hammer pants. He danced. I skipped that part. It was like this shuffling sideways, and I just couldn't do it. Overalls with one part hanging down. Anybody with me on that? He did it. I didn't even like overalls. I felt like they were too country for me. He wore overalls. I wear overalls. He had hair hanging down. He had straight, beautiful hair. I had curly hair. It didn't go down. It, didn't, I, it wouldn't grow down. It grew out. I went and got a perm. <laughs> See, some of you don't know what hair smells like when a hot iron hits it. Some of you don't know what it smells like. It smells unique. It sounds unique. <laughs> Just nod at me if you know what it smells like. You know, there's a unique smell. <laughs> Boom, I'm half Brazilian, half Italian. Okay, if you, never mind, I'm not going to go into it. But I would perm it until it hung down like Jeff's. Pigeon toed, MC Hammer pants. I wanted to be Jeff. And he went to our youth group and he was in our high school. And I don't know what happened. But like this, it felt like it happened in a day. He had nothing to do with church, nothing to do with God. He took an about face, and I rarely saw him at church ever. But when I looked at him and I saw his countenance, when I listened to how he talked, I knew that every drop of faith that he had had vanished. It's gone. And it broke my heart. I, I have a, another friend of mine. He's actually a pastor down south. And he walked into the kitchen to talk to his mom. And he said, Mom, I'm feeling my faith drop. Pastor, I'm feeling my faith drop. And so he started just talking to his mom in the kitchen. And you know how moms are. So you guys are moms. He started tapping his hand. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Jesus loves you. It's okay. Tapping his hand. Well, the father was in the living room. Now, dads don't pat hands. Okay? They don't pat hands. They say, oh, it's okay, baby. It's okay. So that's not what dads do. He comes in there and he goes, Kevin, I'm sick and tired of hearing you whining. You're a pastor, my God. That's what, that's what. And so the mom's like, no, 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 no. Don't talk to him like that. He's just such a good boy. He's a grown man. He's married. He goes, son, when was the last time you shut a door behind you and prayed? You preach about it, but when was the last time you did it? Well, Dad, it's been a minute. When was the last time you opened up the Bible and read at least a chapter? It's been a minute. When was the last time you played worship music in your car? When was the last time you played worship music in your house? Dad, it's been a minute. When was the last time you went on YouTube to hear another preacher preach? It's, it's been a minute. When was the last time you got a Christian book and read it just to be inspired? And his dad is He goes, of course your faith is down. I, I want to look at my friend Jeff and go through the same checklist. Of course your faith is down. 
Can I tell you, you and I have flesh just like everybody else. Simon, Simon, Jennifer, Jennifer, Jeff, Jeff, Frankie, Frankie. Satan is looking to sift you like wheat. What does he want? He wants our faith. We got to keep our hand on the pulse. We are made of flesh. Our faith will drop. You know that your faith is dropping when your desire for God is starting to vanish. When you no longer have a desire for God, you are in trouble. Now, just so you know, that comes to all of us. It comes to my friend Kevin. It comes to me. The enemy comes up and says, I know you believe in God, Frankie, but you really believe he's going to get involved? I mean, come on. The first thing to leave is our desire to pray, our desire to go to church. That's when we know that our faith is sick. You ever notice that when you get the flu or anything like that, the first thing that happens is you no longer desire food. You're not hungry anymore. It's just it looks gross. You don't want to eat it. This is the first thing to go. Your hunger is the first thing to go. And so when he comes in to sift you like wheat, that's what he's doing. When you feel your desire start to drop, you, the alarm needs to go off like a fire alarm. Beep, 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 beep. When you start getting bored in church, when you catch yourself sleeping in church, you're looking around in church. Oh my goodness, do you have any idea what's happening? Do you, you have any idea? Do you have any idea? You may have been going to church for too long. Have you ever met someone who's been going to church for too long? You've been going to church for too long. You're faking enjoying it. You're not even getting anything out of it. You're just that guy. You're that girl. No, I'm going nuts now. This is when the enemy is starting to steal your faith. But did Peter's faith fail? There's an argument up for that. When Jesus was getting whipped, a crown of thorns is getting put on his head. He's carrying a cross. Peter said, if that ever happens to you, if you're ever going to get killed, I'm going to get killed right next to you. I, do you know, Jesus, a crown of thorn is getting put on his head. He's getting whipped. And where's Peter? He's about 20 yards away, hiding. He's with the people from that area. And then he talks. And the people in that area go, whoa, 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 whoa. We know your accent. Yeah. But we, we know you're not from around here. You're, you're a Christian. You're, you're a Jesus follower. Just with an accent. I have about 20 sentences that I know in Spanish. And I love saying those 20 sentences over and over again. And I, they, they work the best when I go to Mexican restaurants. Because I've learned that in a Mexican restaurant, you're saying the same thing over and over and over again. Right? You're asking for the same food. They're asking if you want to refill. It's the same conversation over and over again. So I'm like, I got this. And I do. I can go to a Mexican restaurant and hold my own. But when someone is from Mexico and they hear me speak Spanish, they know I just learned Spanish. I'm saying the right words. They're getting what I'm saying. I'm saying the same words they're saying. But when I say it, they're like, you just learned how to say that. <laughs> it's my accent. It's my pronunciation. They go, huh? Oh, you're a gringo who just learned Spanish. They catch it like that. Peter spoke. And like that, they said, wait a minute, you, you, you're not one of us. 
you're a Christ follower. And he starts cursing up a storm. I don't know what curse words uh, are in Greek, but I know in, in English they're F-bombs like crazy. <laughs> so he starts cursing. Now get this. As he's cursing, the Bible says that Jesus, carrying a cross, looks up and makes eye contact with him. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Right in the middle of your lowest, disgraceful moment, Jesus shows up and looks, you're embarrassed to be around yourself. And he makes eye contact with you. Now, Jesus just prayed, don't let his faith fail. Now, can we have a family discussion? Did his faith fail or not? Yes. No. Yes and no. No and yes. It failed in that moment. Lost his mind. Said something, did something. He felt, oh my gosh, he felt horrible. He felt so bad he took off, weeping and crying. But when you are sorry and you are concerned, you are in the presence of the Lord. Some people say to me, Frankie, I am concerned that I've drifted away from the Lord. And I say to them, if you are concerned, you do not need to be concerned. The people who need to be concerned are the people who are not concerned. If you are concerned... If you are saying, Lord, don't let me drift. Don't let me. You saw I did something stupid. I have a, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. I'm going to put words in, I'm going to tell you what I say. God, you know, if you turn your back on me for one second, I'm going to do something so stupid. You got to pay good attention to me. If you don't want me to walk through that door, you better put 14 angels in front of that door because I'm going to figure out how to mess my life up. I'm just talking about me. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm just, I, I know no one. Is, I'm, I'm just talking about me. And the Lord steps in and he says this. He goes, Peter, and he draws him back in. When he rose from the grave, he says, go get the disciples and Peter. There was a, a, a grandfather that um, a storm came through and started ripping up his plants and his bushes. So he called up his grandson and he said, hey, hey boy. That's how, grandson, that's how grandpa <laughs> so, Hey boy. And so get over here and help me. We're going to take out all the flowers and all the plants that have died in the storm. And so the kid comes over with a shovel and a, a, a what do you call those big uh, knives? Machete. What? Machete. Machete. They're coming over there and he's chopping up a storm. He just wants to get the job done and go play with his friends, right? Just chopping. He walks up to this bush. It looks dead, 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 dead. He walks over there, rears back the machete, goes to chop it. And the grandfather says, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, hold on. Reaches into his pocket. You know, every grandpa has a, a pocket knife. <laughs> Everyone. Walks over there and he grabs the branch. It looks dead, dead, past dead. And he takes the pocket knife and he peels the skin off a branch. And he says, look, there's still green in there. It looks dead, but it's not a lot. It's, it's still alive. Let's just let this be, and we're going to feed it. We're going to pay attention to it. Jesus looks at Peter, and he says, I prayed for your faith. You messed up, but your heart is still for me. You still want it. I still see green. I still see green. The, the fact of the matter is, is that when the Lord looks at you, you may be looking at yourself, wanting to just kick yourself all the time. The Lord looks at you and goes, no, 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 no. I see green. 
There's life in there. There's desire in there. You're in the house of God right now. You, you're here. Why are you here? You say, I didn't even know I was coming here. My, my mom dragged me here and I just woke up and I'm here. No, 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 no. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 33, no man comes to the Father unless drawn by the Son. The Lord looks at you and says, I still see green. I still see love. I still see a passion. He reached out this morning and pulled you to himself. Every single day, he's pulling you to himself. You can't stop thinking about him very long. You can get mad at them. That's it. I'm not worshiping anymore. I'm not going to church anymore. It's still in the back of your head. He keeps pulling you to himself. Why? Because your faith has not failed. You still have faith. The third point, God intercedes for you. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and he's talking to the Father about you. What is he saying? One of the things he's saying is exactly what he said about Peter. He's saying, I see that the enemy is trying to sift them like wheat, trying to get them to worry about something. Have you ever noticed that you're worried about finances and then somehow that gets taken care of and now you're worried about family and then somehow that gets taken care of and then you start worrying about this, you start worrying about that. It's almost like you're addicted to worry. I'm not preaching at you. It's almost like I get sucked into that too. And Jesus is saying, oh, I see the enemy trying to sift them. Lord, don't let her, don't let his faith go away. The Lord is praying for you all the time. And now what we say back, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, I also will not stop praying. I want to challenge you in the same way that my friend's father challenged him. Take your pulse. Do you feel your faith starting to drift Play worship music in your car. Turn off Garth Brooks or whoever. I don't even know. Who's the new country guy everybody loves? Who? Zach Bryan. Turn off Zach Bryan and put on some worship music. Go tell Alexa, play worship music. How easy can it get? Siri, play worship music. If you have a Google phone, you have no chance. <laughs> Those don't work. <laughs> Might as well go get a tape and just. <laughs> Sorry, half the room loves me, the other half doesn't. Whatever you gotta do. <laughs> Should I just dismiss you now? <laughs> Take your pulse. The Lord is praying for you. Keep filling your spirit with worship and praise. Will you stand up and put your hands together for the Lord? Come on. Come on, put your hands together for him. Wave at me if you're glad you came to church this morning. So next Saturday, when you're like, I don't know if I want to go to church, I just want you to remember, you waved your hand. <laughs> Many of you didn't want to come to church today, but you came anyway. Next Saturday, just tell yourself, well, I didn't want to go next Saturday. I was sitting there waving my hand. <laughs> Might as well go again. All the prayer partners, why don't you come down, if you would. All the prayer partners, come down. <clears throat> I say it all the time, and I hope nobody ever forgets it. The common denominator that all of us have is we're all believing God for a miracle. 
is different. But we're all believing God for a miracle. Sometimes we have the faith and the strength to pray for ourselves. And then there's other times where you just think, God, will you just make my name cross someone's mind and have them pray for me because I'm too weak to pray. Today, there are prayer partners down here. They will pray for you. That's why they're here. If you look down here and you go, well, all the prayer partners are praying for someone. There's, there's no one available. We've got an usher at the bottom of every row. They'll point you to the person that's available for you to pray with. If you're in this room and you know it, nobody has to tell you. If your heart were to stop beating in the next five minutes, you are not ready to see the Lord. You're the most important person in the room. I want you to come down and take the hand of a prayer partner and just say, I got to get my life right with God. If you're sitting there, well, you know, I don't want to do that. It'll be awkward and embarrassing. The Bible says if you're ashamed of God in front of people, he'll be ashamed of you in front of the Father. So I want you to come out of your seats. Pray with a prayer partner. Let me pray a blessing over your life. And let's just sing this song one or two times through before anyone leaves. There's no official dismissal. You might pray, I mean, sing the song one time through. You might sing it 10 times through. You can leave whenever you get ready. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine down upon you and be gracious to you. May his countenance be lifted up on you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.